say, like, I'm just having an off day, and I just intubated the esophagus, which actually did happen to me the other day. I realized, I said, okay, I don't have any fogging in the tube. I'm not getting any entitled CO2. She was a very anterior airway, um, and I would have to get the bougie out of the package, and I was like, I think I can make that angle, and so I just went for it, and I intubated the esophagus. And so um, what I did was, of course, I deflated the cuff, pulled the tube out, um, and went right back to mass ventilating because I had no problem mass ventilating. So reassess. How long has it been since I gave my last dose of propofol? Is the patient going to be light if I go to do laryngoscopy again? If that's the case, push a little more propofol. Uh, if that's not the case, um, Hopefully you're not doing an RSI. You know, hopefully you, you nail your first RSI if this happens. Um, so yeah, you go back to mass ventilating and you try something different is the key. You do not repeat the same thing. So change your position. Either you know put the patient into a sniffing position or um, extend their head a little bit more. Try a different blade. You can try a laryngoscope, or excuse me, a video laryngoscope. You can try with a bougie. Just don't try the same thing that failed you the first time. So if you don't change anything, and you try again doing the same thing, what's the definition of insanity, right? <laughs> doing the same thing and expecting a different result. So don't do that, because our attempts at laryngoscopy are limited, because every time you try to intubate, you are traumatizing the airway. You're causing edema and swelling, potentially bruising, bleeding, um, None of this tissue likes to be instrumented at all. Intubation is extremely stimulating, so you really want to be successful as early as possible.